Hello, hello, hello. Uh, it's been a while, been a couple of weeks. I've been quite a busy boy. Um, in the meantime, thank you very much for watching the videos. Thank you for um, subscribing. If you've subscribed, it's really nice to see people um, watching them and, and hopefully finding them useful. Um, today, I'd like to share with you um, one a very, very practical technique, something that I found extremely useful um, with regards getting key vocabulary into our learners' heads and, uh, and helping it stay there. Um, if you're following this, I mean, if you're watching it now, and if you started term, say in September, you're probably two, three weeks into the year, and uh, you might have worked through the first few units of your course book, if you've got one, and uh, you might have noticed, hey, they're, they're not learning the vocabulary uh, as quickly um, or, or as effectively uh, as I would have liked. It's, you know, maybe the language is not quite sticking. You might not. I mean, I don't want to problematize your classroom just so that I can provide the apparent cure here. Um, I think maybe in the sort of support branch of ELT, uh, as presenters, trainers, speakers, sometimes we do that uh, a little bit, you know. Feeling stressed in your classroom? Well, I've got the answer. And stuff like that. Maybe you're not stressed in your classroom. Maybe your vocabulary teaching is going swimmingly. If it is, um, maybe you want... <laughs> You want to skip this video um, and that. So yeah, I'm not trying to paint a grim picture of your classroom. Um, but that was the situation for me a few years back. I'd say about five, six years back when I started using this technique seriously. Um, I had a course book uh, with some intermediate teenagers. Good course book, I liked it. Um, and the first or second units were about food and there was a nice vocabulary picture dictionary at the back, but I could not get that language to stick. Um, they were getting cauliflowers and uh, courgettes and cabbages all confused with each other. So I tried something simple, slightly brutal, but effective. Uh, it's not in, da da da, surprise, surprise. Here it is, it's coming fast. It's not in this book. But uh, the book's coming past anyway, Understanding Teenagers in the ELT Classroom, by the book, by the book, by the book, by the book, by the book. Uh, it's not there. It is, however, in this book, which I don't think I've, uh, I've, I've shown you yet on this channel. This is a book I wrote for um, primarily for younger learners, um, Structuring Fun in the ELT Classroom. Um, uh, again, though, it's a nice, thick book full of many, many, many ideas. And this particular idea is there in a chapter uh, entitled The Massive Potential of Clips and Images. If you do teach primary, um, I'm very, very happy with this book. You might want to think about getting your hands on a copy. OK, that's the promo part done. Um, it's just this. A sentence with the target item with the word you're trying to teach them gapped leaving the first letter only and an image accompanying it on the same slide on the second slide of your presentation the same image the same sentence and the target word restored that's it it's that simple so uh, let me show you i've used vegetables i've taken some funky pictures um, around the around the house of the vegetables so that I don't have any problem with copyright showing them on the, uh, you know, showing them on the clip. But when I do this with my groups, in closed groups, and nobody's going to see these, then I'll just take pictures from the internet willy-nilly, um, because, um, you know, it's just for my own use within the class. Um, <laughs> cabbage. Cue the cabbage. That was the first slide. I'll show them that. Anybody got any ideas? One, two, three, no? Okay, click. And they see the next slide. Um, and that, let's see, what's the next one? Uh, red cabbage, cue red cabbage. And then the next slide with the word restored. Click.
and that's it. I'll show you. Uh, I'll show you a couple more. Um, what's next up? I've forgotten. Oh yeah, cauliflower. Click. Click. And the next one. Click. And finally, click. Um, so you can see there are gaps, but the gaps are not being used so that, you know, they're not having to stew in, in their own quandary, trying to figure out and remember. No, the gaps, and I use gap fills primarily for recall. Can you remember what it is? No, if not, no problem, I'll show you. I say to them, it's not whether you can figure it out the first time, it's whether you can remember it the second time. So I'll show my class a batch of maybe 10 of these images at the beginning of the lesson, see if they can get them. We might run through them once, might run through them again at the end of the lesson, see if they know them already, they can go super fast. And I find it's the image, the sentence, it just helps fix everything in their mind. Obviously, I'm not showing them, you know, 60, 80, 100 slides in one go. It would be like boom, 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 like the, a clockwork orange, a bit where he has his eyes, you know, held open in front of the screen. I don't want to do that to them. But maybe the next lesson I'll show them those 10 and another 10 that I've prepared. So some of my lesson preparation is, you know, finding slides and making some sentences. Doesn't take long, but it's something that systematically you have to remember to do. And, and then you sort of accumulate a nice set of images for maybe one topic and then food and then maybe the next unit is travel, um, transport, vehicles, houses, whatever. Um, and that is the way I found that really gets the language to stick in their heads. Um, now, obviously, you don't want to be spending, you know, 20 minutes looking for a cool picture of a radish online. So sometimes my images are a little bit more normal. They're not, they're not all cool and quirky. I'll try. I mean, if you, if you type in funky, funky cabbage, you'll get something, you know, or weird cabbage. You normally get something interesting. And obviously the sentences can be tangential, you know, they can be a little bit daft, but it's just helping them, give them something to remember that target item by. Um, now then. Having shown you that, um, we have to remember that the most beautiful way of um, using new vocabulary in class is to have that vocabulary, those language items embedded in questions that students can ask each other in lovely acts of communication. So obviously, you know, that's good. Now they know the meaning, but we haven't necessarily taken them to a point where they're using the language. So we would also want to introduce something like this. Click communicative language questions with target language embedded in. And that's that. Right. Um, if you use that, please come back to me and let me know. Uh, strength and energy with your teaching.